In this video, we are going to discuss the importance of citizen journalism. Why is it integral to a democratic society and how is it different from traditional journalism? Hello and welcome to Citizen Journalism Explored, the series that investigates the responsible application and consumption of citizen journalism. Before we go any further into this series, I wanted to point out the importance of citizen journalism in a democratic society. For that, I need to introduce you to the fifth estate. The fifth estate is the term that refers to the outlier group of content that is published from non-mainstream media sources. It acts as the checks and balances or watchdog of the other four estates. What are the other four estates? The first three are the estates of the realm, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branches of the government. The fourth estate is the independent press. It is important that the fifth estate not have institutional foundations because it holds all others accountable. It influences government policy and shapes media coverage as the press can be influenced by power and money and can try to manipulate the story. The fifth estate is that counter voice that would combat any nation state propaganda. Okay, so the main points would be that the fifth estate is important in a democratic society because it keeps the government and the media in check. Notice that I say in a democratic society, because oftentimes in an authoritarian styled government, they try to suppress the voice of the fifth estate. The authoritarian style government tries to control the voices of its citizens. There are a couple of different strategies in which the authoritarian government can do this. However, this simple idea is that they promote the voices that agree or support the government's actions, and they would limit or silence the voices that go against or contradict the government's actions. Now that we understand what the fifth estate is, know that citizen journalism is one tool or aspect of the fifth estate. Let's see how the practices and traits of citizen journalism lend to its inherent importance in the democratic conversation. Okay, so some key features and benefits of citizen journalism is that it gives ordinary people a voice. Citizen journalists are often motivated to tell the stories that are going untold. They notice the gaps in mainstream media coverage and seek out the stories to go and fill those gaps. Sometimes these are the stories and the narratives of the communities that are underrepresented. One of the beauties of citizen journalists is that they don't wait to be invited. They go out and find that alternative viewer narrative and will often challenge mainstream media with it. Oftentimes when citizen journalists are trying to develop stories or following closely on certain narratives, they will foster relationships with the communities which they are trying to report on. They could just be reporting on those communities, but oftentimes they share their opinions or have like views, which allows them to build stronger bonds with those communities and gain more valuable information and insight. One benefit of being a citizen journalist is that you can often blend in with communities or as a protester at an event. With this, you can capture a much more visually compelling narrative and video. Citizen journalism is often evolving with the affordances of modern technology. In Boyd's 2014 paper, It's Complicated, The Social Lives of Networked Teens, he identifies four affordances of new media technologies. I'll explain how citizen journalists can take advantage of these. The first affordance is persistence. When a citizen journalist posts an article, blog, or photo, video on new media technologies, that narrative is there for good. Unlike the past where you can hand out a pamphlet, which can be discarded and then never viewed again, the internet sticks around. Content on the internet is always there. The second affordance is visibility. Visibility is the ability to have a much larger audience. For instance, a live stream can be recorded in one city and can be viewed by millions from all over the world. The third affordance is spreadability, the ease at which content can be shared. So again, a citizen journalist can create content and it can be shared with millions of seemingly unconnected people. And finally, the fourth affordance of new media technologies is searchability. It's much easier to find content on the internet and with new media technologies. Because citizen journalists are technologically driven, they often seek out different routes to try to tell stories. They try new practices and techniques in their reporting. Some of these practices have been proven effective in which case, oftentimes mainstream media will try to adopt them. One thing that I wanted to do was point out the differences between citizen journalism and traditional journalism. 
So some of the biggest differences between new media technologies and traditional media are the ability of new media technologies to beat traditional news media outlets to the punch. Citizen journalists can publish media much faster than traditional news outlets. They are more mobile, which allows them to outpace mainstream media. Oftentimes, mainstream media is a high-intensity process. They use labor-intensive equipment. They have high standards of production. And their viewers hold them to a much higher standard as well. And mainstream media has a lot of professional practices, including fact-checking, which allow them to produce much higher quality content. Along with being able to publish content faster, citizen journalists often will stick with the story longer than mainstream media will. Oftentimes, mainstream media will have a turn and burn practice with their news coverage, where stories have to be effective to capture the audience's attention real quick, and then they'll move on. Citizen journalists can leverage the new media technologies like live streaming on YouTube for 12 hours at a political protest or you know, gaining you that insight into the views and perspectives of those that are there at the scene. There are a few things that slow down the production of traditional media. One of them is because the viewers often hold them to a higher standard than a citizen journalist. Mainstream media news outlets have to be credible. They have to go out and fact check their story before they publish it to their audience. The last thing that I wanted to touch on was that traditional journalists will often hear about a story or a newsworthy event taking place, they'll have to rush down to the scene and try to capture that newsworthy event as it's taking place. Well, oftentimes that's already happened. If the moment has passed, then there's nothing left to capture. That's the wonderful thing about citizen journalists is that they can stumble across a newsworthy event at the time it's taking place. And then you can simply pull out your phone and take a video or a photo of it as it's occurring. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you've enjoyed this content, Please check out the next video in this series where we will be reviewing some of the wonderful things that citizen journalism has brought to us. As usual, like and share my videos with people that you think would enjoy them. Check out the notes for more helpful content. All right, see you in the next one.